Hey nerdlings! What up nerdlings? Alright, well we have another video coming at you. This is uh, less of an interview and more of a open room Q&A session. Yes, we got to talk to Meavers and Joker's Harley. And it should be on. Yep, they're on. Okay. Not that you need them in this room. I, I, it's the tiniest <laughs> room. Let's put a sound system with microphones. Alright, whatever. So. Alright. <laughs> Actually, yeah, we can hear that perfectly. <laughs> I can't so, hear out of one ear, so I can't tell from a screen. <laughs> don't say any Jeez, secrets up so there. Why don't we start by uh, you guys introducing yourselves, and you can introduce yourselves as to who you are and uh, why you are here wanting to know about them, and then you can ask your questions. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Tom. This I'm is my Lacey. wife, Lacey. Yeah. Uh, we have a YouTube channel called Do You Nerd? Our whole thing is just... Anything that we nerd out about, we like to share that, find like-minded individuals, and we're big on creating awareness, especially with like conventions and everything. Uh, a lot of times people don't even know mm -hmm. there are cool conventions like this in their hometown, so mm -hmm. it's kind of our, our main thing. That's why we like to come here, talk to you guys, and we're big fans of cosplay, yeah. so uh, any information we can get from the pros, sure. we always appreciate that too. What would you like to know? I know they love uh, origin stories, how you got into it, and Oh, Stuff the like dark that. days. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys? Hello. I think they're figuring out cameras. Okay. <laughs> okay. Want to introduce yourselves? Hello. Uh, we're from Movie Time. Movie Time. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, and Elijah, we're from Movie Time. It's like uh, what we are is a show that basically it is by the industry for the industry people. And what we do is we go in depth um, interviews for people from different industries and uh, give them information and interesting things that they can find out from how they can get into it to when you're in here, how do you advance? Okay. That's fair. <laughs> All right, so who's got the first question? I guess basically, how did you get into cosplay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I was in high school, and uh, I think that is everyone's weeb phase. <laughs> as far as uh, uh, just, oh, I love Inuyasha, and I, I love uh, Sailor Moon, and, and all of that. And then one of my friends came in and said, hey, there's a local convention where you can dress up like your favorite characters. And I was just like, no way. Like, how, how do I do this? And they're like, oh, let's go to Joanne's. I'm like, what is a Joanne? <laughs> <laughs> so we figured out how to sew, and at that time I didn't have a sewing machine, so I made my first costume from scratch. And uh, I just used the clothes that were around the house. And uh, ever since then, it was just, how do I make this look better? <laughs> and, and it was a lot of networking of just like, dude, how did you do this? And they're like, oh, well, I followed this tutorial. And then it was just kinetic on the, on the internet of like, now I know this keyword, so let me just put it into this and look at something else. So a lot of it's just research. And then it just kind of grew from there. Nice. So there you go. Origin story. Um, let's see. So my boyfriend, Tony, he kind of was like, I guess I'll dress up as a Joker for Halloween, and then someone mentioned a comic book. Almost nothing, sorry. <laughs> um, a comic book convention, and so I was like, I'll go to that. And he got a lot of attention, and so he's like, oh, I'm gonna make this better. And then um, he met me. He's like, well, I'm gonna go to San Diego Comic Con. How about we make you Harley? So he spent six months doing that, and it was really awkward and weird at first, and then I got a little better at it, and then it's been like, what, like six years. Wow. And so it kind of just like went from there, just him asking me to be Harley. And I was like, I guess, I've never done this before. <laughs> That's awesome though. Yeah? Yeah. So but in terms of your cosplay, like how do you feel that it's your favorite, uh, like what is your favorite characters that you've done? What is the ones that, you know, have been the most challenging? Oh man, uh, did you want to take? I think mine has to be Harley. I do her all the time, and she's like my main cosplay gal. But I think it's just I'm so comfortable in her, and I can kind of get away with anything. Like they're not gonna stop. Like I can go behind other people's booths. I can do things. I can just be really silly and loud and obnoxious, and it's a lot of fun. It's really positive. So I really like doing her. As far as difficult characters to do. I just can't get my finger on Raven from Teen Titans. I've done her like three times, three different costumes. And I'm like, you know what? Not, not the one for me. I just can't do it. 
Yeah. Uh, I feel like that one's uh, two different questions for me. Because <laughs> uh, I've got the fun, bouncy costumes that I can just do whatever in, and like you wouldn't think that this would restrict some things, but just trying to reach in time inside my bag, I'm like, I can't. I, I have a cone on my hand. <laughs> so <laughs> then you have to be aware of like what your costume is, and if something is restricting you, what sort of shoes you're wearing, and like what your wig is doing, you have to just be aware of your body. And I think the one that I had the most trouble in was my Demi Symmetra and I was covered in body paint and um, like I had sealed it all so I wouldn't mess on anything but it was just I was big and had to be aware of who was touching me and I, I wore it at Dragon Con of all places and there were just people everywhere and I'm just like ah <laughs> don't touch me but yeah. uh, I have so many costumes that I can just run around and just be like a doof but this one is probably one of my most favorites so there I am yeah, I hit everyone with my Harley bells. I just <laughs> smack them all the time. The occupational hazard, I know. <laughs> um, you know, you mentioned like the kind of the freedom of being a different character. What are some other positives to cosplaying and you know, kind of um, breaking out of your own shell? I guess. <laughs> so my biggest thing is um, uh, I had a lot of self-esteem issues. Growing up, I had uh, <laughs> um, I had a verbally abusive mom and grandmother, and so like I I've lost some weight now, but like I used to be twenty pounds heavier, and people wouldn't consider that um, you know big. But my two of those people would always tell me that I was like obese, and it just really screwed with my my psyche, and so. Like when I wore Harley for the first time, I was super self-conscious. I'm like, I'm wearing a tight suit. I don't know if I'm gonna get any comments. I don't know if I'm gonna be laughed at. Um, and I did, and I cried. And then I got over it. Like it took a while, but the more I wore the suit, the more comfortable I just got in my own self. Like I, like I would never wear a midriff. It never like today I am that's so weird <laughs> but like it's like you know what this is my body if it squishes somewhere it squishes somewhere if you don't think it's attractive someone else might um, and if no one does it doesn't matter because I feel good in my own skin whether or not I'm one way or another way if I'm in one costume or another costume um, and so it's it's weird how putting on a costume made me more comfortable in everyday clothes Cause I would just wear baggy t-shirts and ill-fitting jeans. And now I'm just a little more confident in when I'm taking out just regular clothes because I put on these ridiculous costumes. <laughs> it's just, it's weird how it just like meshed together. It's, it's weird. Uh, I've heard that, and not to interrupt, but uh, I have some friends who uh, do belly dancing. And then uh, also the same friends do burlesque dancing. And they never thought in a million years that they would even want to go near that kind of stuff because they're a bit overweight or they don't like this about their body or, or whatnot. And they said the more they did it, the more it was free. And, exactly. uh, and it just, they started feeling good and they're like, I'm beautiful, damn it. You know? Exactly. And uh, I think that's awesome. That is awesome. <clears throat> yeah, definitely to echo that one, I don't know how to follow that up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, it was definitely the same sort of situation for me where um, like, not necessarily um, abusive parents, I'm sorry. But, uh, My dad's great. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but it was uh, kind of the, the reverse problem is I was a very sheltered child. And um, my, my parents were just like, you're too pretty, you can't go outside. And I'm like, but I want to go to the movies. And they're like, no. <laughs> so I have to stay home all the time. And whenever I'd ask to go out, they'd be like, nope. So it was just kind of like, all right, well, I'm just going to be like this tiny shell of a person. And like, I'll talk to people. But then like costumes like came out. And it was just like, all right, well, maybe I can kind of embrace kind of who I am and, and just kind of mesh those worlds together and kind of open up and to just be like, hey, I'm not afraid to talk to you. And I'm going to wear a weird outfit <laughs> and it will be a conversation starter but um it, like there are other people that are in worse off situations than, than i am and it's the like you can tell that they're uncomfortable and it's like i feel like it helps with other people to just be like hey like i can see that you worked really hard on your costume and like you're nervous to wear it so um like hey i'm also here in a doofy costume wearing body paint and like 
I'm a gem, I'm a crystal gem, or just uh, I'm, a, I'm a clown or whatever. So it's okay, you're with like-minded people. And it kind of gives you like a sense of ease that, hey, let's be dorks together. No, yeah, like, this is fun. Point. It's like, a community. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it's most certainly empowering, and it's just like you're not afraid to be you. Yeah, that's great. That's how I met most of my friends. Yeah. All, like, I met her through cosplay. My, mm -hmm. One of my best friends in New York happened to work down the street from me, but I met her at a convention, and now I see her every day. So, yeah, it's, it's a really positive environment sometimes when you have the right people. Yes. <laughs> That's one thing I like to hear about. Uh, a lot of people say that about VisionCon, how it is. Uh, everybody's really nice and really yes. supportive, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a good community. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever noticed, um, like in the modeling world, especially in, in the cosplay world, uh, female cosplayers and male cosplayers, and when they're trying to be professional cosplayers, is it easier for women um, than it is for men, or do you think it's an equal thing? Um, I mean, your, your husband, um, Joker, mm -hmm. you guys are married, right? No, but we consider ourselves married. Okay, it's it's, it's well, been I mean, seven years. It's, I mean, you guys are both like very, very iconic and, and loved in, in what you do. Have you, has it been easier or harder for either one of you or the same? Or He stopped doing it right. uh, several years ago, and it's been harder for me because it's it slowly made me realize, now it's not intentional, but I slowly realized that I was seen as more of an accessory when I was hardly next to his Joker. And so when he retired, everyone's like, are you gonna get an IV, are you gonna get another Joker? And it's like, why do I have to have a partner? Can't I just be Harley? And um, it's been really hard to like break out of that shell because sometimes I don't wanna be her. Sometimes, like at this con, it's hard to be her because I have to help inside and I have to help get out of it. Um, and I wanna be other characters and explore that and sometimes it's a little difficult to do it when people expect mm. the Harley costume or they expect him. Oh, look, I shut a door. Blooper reels. Yeah. Everybody loves blooper reels. No, yeah, Johnny. I just noticed, I, I, I would think based on pictures and what I see in social media, that there's way more professional women cosplayers than there are men. I, th I think it's because society already sexualizes women, and that's a lot <laughs> of the images you see out there. Um, and so it's harder for, I think, guys to, like I've seen guys do some like pinup stuff, and it's not just them, but like the image, it looks very professional. And then I'll see just some like selfie of someone with their boobs out or whatever, mm -hmm. and they are just like insanely popular. So I think it, it's just, it is harder, I think just because of society, you know, between men and women. Um, but um, I, don't, I don't pay too much attention to like the photographers and stuff, because I do all my own shooting at home. Do you really? We have a, um, a small studio in our office where we shoot each other um, and we do all the editing, we do air really, like most of the photos on my table are ones that I have taken or he has taken. Well, that's awesome. Um, and so I don't step into the modeling world of other people, so I'm not as aware on the inside if it's difficult for others, but just being on the outside, I do see a lot more women um, getting more and more popular or more and more likes or more and more gigs based on their professional modeling photos versus like guys I see do it, even though sometimes either the guys are a lot better or um, I don't know, they do it more frequent. I, it's weird, it's just a weird. It's a double standard. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's, unfortunate. Yeah. it's an unfortunate truth. Yeah. <laughs> it's just something that we can't necessarily get around. And while we would like to change it, it's either uh, your, your body is out, <laughs> uh, either if you're a man or a woman, or yeah. you are extremely talented. There is no middle ground. And yeah. um, there are people that uh, can do both, but still, it's just there are unfortunately more women. And uh, I, I have been seeing a little bit more men coming into the industry. And, um, Which is awesome. And yeah, they're not just right. doing, because I feel like a lot of people, sorry, um, uh, expect the, got the male cosplayers to do those really big builds in big armor pieces and so then when they see them in something more I would say delicate 
um, they're, they're either laughed at or they're not taken seriously. Like, I just saw this guy as Princess Leia, and it's like the costume was on, not here on a photo, but like his, it was like on point, and he looked amazing, but like a lot of comments were just making fun of him. But it's like, it's so good. Like, it's like, I can see how you're, it's, oh, I don't know. You just can't win. Sometimes. Yeah, you just can't win. You get the whole community. We all support each other until we get catty and make fun of each other. I know. <laughs> it sucks. But who has the most fun? <laughs> anyway, I don't want to stay home. <laughs> I do stay home. <laughs> right, well, uh, yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> moving so, on. Uh, so what was Go. the most difficult thing that actually has happened to you when you have been in cosplay? Um, difficult thing. Um, difficult how? Difficult, like, is in, um, has an audience member ever, like, you know, been overly aggressively bad, or has it been, like, you know, you've tripped on a costume piece that you thought for sure that this was not going to happen, and then uh, you are... Costume malfunction? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that happens to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, just, oh, I forgot something at home, or I uh, this did not hold up nearly as well as I thought it was going to, like, a wig, just to being, like, oh, I'm just going to fall It doesn't want to work like, that day. No! <laughs> the test run, why are you doing this? Uh, no, that's happened on many occasions, or uh, just being around a bunch of people and them bumping into you and your costume like falling apart, or just like a zipper just kind of like ripping and you're like, that was not a good sound. What I know. that? <laughs> <laughs> and then losing something on it of just like, I had a ninja star on me somewhere. Well, like, whatever, I guess. But yeah, that happens all the time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, what would you say to somebody who wants to uh, cosplay but is too nervous about it to put yourself out there? Gross thick skin. Oh, um, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, what helped me was having someone next to me to help play off of, or else I'm just like really awkward by myself. Um, and I feel like if, if <laughs> like you should have seen me at the ceremony last night or whatnot. Um, if you, let's say, like, like, like if you want to choose a character that has other characters around him, whether it's like Sailor Moon or like uh, uh, Poison Ivy and Harley or Joker, if you, yeah, if you get a buddy to go with you, it might be easier and make you less nervous because then you have a, a support system. Um, and I think that helps me a lot and I've been doing this for several years and I still get like just insane stage fright and I don't know why but it's it's so much easier having someone next to you. <laughs> well, I, I know that sounded a little bit mean but I mean I, I'm a veteran on the internet and there's always going to be somebody that is going to try and make fun of you just because they didn't have nothing else going on in their life but it just you take those comments to heart especially when you first start out oh my god i know rule number one of the internet do not read the comments so uh if you are feeling bad about yourself don't worry there are other people out there that will make you feel incredibly worse so just don't listen to anybody uh, on the internet and even if somebody tries to walk past you and you're just kind of like wow like what kind of attempt was that at a costume you're just kind of like i'm here to have fun and you're a part of your so walk that way but it's just don't listen to anybody and you're just do what you're gonna do and you obviously want to try it so don't let anybody stop you if you want to be Harley then you are Harley and you let your freak flag fly like don't let exactly. anybody stop you ever if you want to be fat Thor be fat Thor see <laughs> Taylor's hello <laughs> he made it possible now for a lot of people to cosplay <laughs> <laughs> But still, I mean, just don't let anybody put you down. Yeah, I know it's a, a mental thing. That it's just it's so easy to say. Like I've been, I've been there, and like had like nobody to talk to about it. Of just kind of like I'm a worthless thing. Like why do we even try? And just to go into the spiral. But then it was just kind of like I, I don't care. Like they can say whatever they want about me, and it's not going to change anything. They're just words. So it's just like go do what you're going to do. Be part of the over there. So. It's an opinion, not a fact. There you go. And on the positive fan side, it's like, uh, have you ever had somebody who's like, oh my god, I just love Lee, like, <laughs> you know, and been in the, like, oh my god, you look just like her. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah, they, yeah <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> Especially with children. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, when I was in Ladybug, <laughs> I, I had 
kids come up to me all the time and then they would just do the silent stare at you and then give you a hug on your leg and I'm just like, ah, oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> but those are my favorite. I can't do that with Harley. Kids cry. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know if it's like the makeup or the mask. They don't understand what they're looking at. But like I've seen so many crying infants. I'm just like, please love me. Like I'll get on the ground. Just love me. Uh, yeah, the kids are my favorite. <laughs> Uh, that's true. I, I, I do uh, Winter Soldier along, uh, alongside Thor and Captain America and all that, and the kids always go to them, and I have to take that mask off because they're afraid of the Winter Soldier mask. <laughs> yeah, but it's the kid. That's a huge reason why we all do what we do, right? And the kids and their eyes, and then you know that's their heroes, and you get to be their hero. Sure. I that's, love that feeling. It's, I know. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> when I was Princess Jasmine at uh, WonderCon, I can't tell you how many kids came up to me and did the same thing. And, I just you kind of melt on the inside of you like I want to work at Disney so I can experience this every day. This is dopamine going on. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, no, those are great. Even oh, when it's not with kids, where you're just kind of like, oh, I worked really hard to make this. Thanks. <laughs> on the inside, you're like, yes. <laughs> That's a good point. Are you in your careers? Are you at a point where you still have a plan for what you haven't attained yet? Or are you happy where you are and just going to kind of sail through? Or is, is there any greater aspirations, like oh. working for Disney or getting yeah. off the <laughs> When I grow up, I'm going to be a Disney princess. Yeah, I know. I wish. Gosh. No, um, I, I see this as um, a, an expensive hobby. And uh, there's always like the next build of challenging myself into making something different. Of like one of the costumes that I really want to make is Bayonetta. And uh, I keep looking at her and a lot of the symmetrical pieces that are together. I'm just like, how? Just, just how? <laughs> and I've been doing all kinds of research on it. And then it's uh, styling wigs has been my recent endeavor. I, I recently restyled my somber wig, and it was I was scared to touch it just because I had spent so much time dyeing it, and it was like you have to tease it and put hairspray and do this. And I'm just like, but I okay. And then I finally did it, and then I'm like, oh, that wasn't so bad. And now I'm like styling all of my wigs now <laughs> to make them like withstand wind. <laughs> it's just like uh, it's it's just another project to just be like, how can I expand on this? I'm gonna try armor. I'm gonna try styling wigs, and I'm gonna do set. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Do it exactly. It's terrible. But <laughs> just learning and experiencing and growing and kind of just challenging myself is always how I see it. So, awesome. Yes. Yeah, it's a good creative outlet. Yes. Absolutely. Like, I don't make, I don't, I, I wouldn't consider this a career or, I don't even consider myself a professional. I kind of just, because I have a day job. Mm -hmm. What do you all this do? Is, Huh? What do you all do for your day job? I work at Starbucks. Do you really? You're a barista? I'm a barista. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Batman. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, I got health insurance. My boyfriend has health insurance because of me. So like, I can give that up. I like the health insurance, especially now. <laughs> it's too scary out there. Uh, yeah, for real. Yes. Um, but this is, this is, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a way to distress myself. Like just get away. Have some fun, um, meet new people, sometimes travel. Um, sometimes get stuck in airports. That was her, not me. <laughs> I'm getting PTSD just thinking about how you do that to me. <laughs> that was a fun. Yeah. yeah. Adventure. 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 Yes. Well, we've got to wrap this up. Is there any last questions? I have one more. Is there any material that you have worked with that you're like, never again? Exactly. Or is there a tier material? that you really want to master. Velvet. <laughs> oh my god. Bless your heart. It's not, I, I, so I don't sew, but um, I am really into like, I will watch over you if you're sewing something. Like just do, no, do that. I don't know how you're doing it, but do this. Um, and I had asked someone to make me a Star Trek uniform, because she had the original fabric. And she's like, yeah, I got it. It was spandex. I'm like, oh. and she she challenged me. She's like, it's impossible to make a velvet dress and have it fit snug and to be able to move. I was like, accept it. <laughs> so I found a seamstress who um, is amazing. Uh, she works for like Lion King and Frozen on Broadway, and um, we went and got velvet. I stood there, and she made me the best looking, it's, it's a gorgeous dress, it fits me, I can move my arms, it, I can move around, and it doesn't stretch, but I can move, and I was like, accomplish that, 
Okay. But if I gained any weight, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't zip it up right now. And um, I want to I wanna master how I can do, kind of like what Michael Jackson did on his dancing tours. His um, pants had spandex in the, in the seams. Mm -hmm. And so when he moved, he was able to move, but he was using these, this material that wasn't flexible at all. And I would love to figure out how I can do that with velvet so I can make something more intricate. Um, because sometimes I just feel like you can only go so far with certain fabrics mm -hmm. and fa uh, velvet or silk has that great texture and look. And I just, I don't know, I love velvet, it looks so much. <laughs> and I just want to use it on everything. And I just want to figure out how I can make it for certain things that I need to be able to move and figure out how I can get that to stretch. Um, I've made most of these costumes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I've worked with spandex, I, I've worked with a fabric that doesn't stretch at all as far as mastering um, one over the other. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a fabric, I would like to uh, master a warbler. And uh, I use I'm so it. scared of that stuff. Uh, it, it's great and I'm I love so it. I use it on a lot of things and uh, it, like you can make masks out of it, you can make all kinds of accessories out of it. They're still, like, I want to make it smooth sort of thing so I'm still experimenting with that one. But fabric, I, I'm kind of just like, whatever. And it's just like so, I put it into the sewing machine. <laughs> oh, it works. Yeah, except for satin. Stay away from satin. Just I can't express that enough. Stay away from satin. Does it just like shred? It, it is just. It, you look at it in a phrase, and it's not a good thing. And it's a. It's an awful mess. And just no. Just don't do it. Just say no. To oh yeah, anything woven. I had a my Kiki bow for Kiki's delivery service was a woven, yeah. heavy mm -hmm. fabric, and as soon as I cut it, I was like, oh. That's no. gonna be a problem. No, just no. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of hot glue. <laughs> it's, it's just also remind people how you get to the, how we see you on social media. Oh, um, I'm Meevers Desu. M e e v e r s d s u. I'm on Instagram the most, so please poke me and bother me on there. That is where I do social things. Yes, I'm also mostly on Instagram. Um, Alyssa R King. A l y s s a r k i n g. And on Facebook, I'm Joker's Harley Cosplay, because I took the first two. So mad about that still. Um, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Hello. Thank, Thank you guys awesome. very much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you guys for yeah. coming. I apologize to you guys. Well, nerdlings, they were a lot of fun to talk to, mm -hmm. and they did not shy away from any of the questions that we had. I think we uh, we probably bored them with some of the more atypical questions, like how they got their start. And uh, I really liked, though, when you asked some of the fabrics maybe yeah. to avoid, uh, because, I don't know, I guess... I felt like there were some horror flashbacks with uh, the neighbors, and she was like, satin, satin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought that was funny, because I was like... I sleep on a satin pillow and I like my satin. But I can see how like trying to sew with it can be issues. <laughs> that and uh, you know, velvet, I guess, is one of those fabrics that you don't really think about. Like, oh yeah, it's got a really good look, but yeah. I don't know, I guess you wouldn't really think that it's such a nightmare to work with. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely can attest. I come from a long line of seamstresses in my family and I did not get that bug. So I have <laughs> never tried to work with fabrics other than being a 1950s good housewife and literally darning my husband's socks when he gets holes in them but uh, that's about as much sewing as i've ever done so you know the whether they do have fabrics they like or don't have fabrics they like you're way better than i am <laughs> now a couple of questions that i really liked being asked was regarding kind of the double standards for guys trying to cosplay mm -hmm. uh, because of course the girls even touch on this and they say that it is a little bit easier for girls to kind of get that recognition for cosplay yeah especially if they're doing you know more of the over glorified and sexualized cosplay and even when the guys try to do stuff like that if it's pinup stuff or anything they don't garner that same attention again because of those double standards yeah I would, I would agree with that. Sometimes it does seem harder for guys to get recognized unless you're doing like the big body armor stuff. Right. Because that does seem like very recognizable, you know, like a master chief or something like that. You can tell who that is. And I do feel like, you know, guys have it easier in that regard. But when they try to do anything else, they're just like, yeah, who are exactly. You as? Because like the girl said, unless you're doing a big build like that and you're a guy, it's like, you know, no one really cares what else you're doing. And that's a shame because yeah. there's a lot of really cool cosplays there out there yeah. that don't have to be that, you know, super impressive, you know, art body armor to where like you get this amount of movement yeah. and that's it. Yeah. 
Yeah. One thing that I did think was kind of interesting was that before the girls came into the room, um, our uh, press coordinator, he was telling us, now the girls are kind of shy, so, you know, they might be a little quiet or it might take a little bit for them to warm up or whatnot. And um, <laughs> he did mention that Joker's Harley, um, I think, was having like an airplane ear or something. And so he's like, she can't hear very well. And at one point she did say, I'm sorry, what was that? I, I, I'm having some inner ear thing from the airplane. But I didn't notice them being very shy or, you know, having a hard time starting off talking. I mean, like, they were just ready to go and, you know, didn't have any problems answering questions or talking to us. Like, you know, like we were just best buds or something. So. You know, that's very true. Of course, in the interview, they actually did discuss the fact that sometimes uh, going to a convention or an event and dressing up in a like costume with a friend or yeah. with another... Uh, can really help you overcome some of those, you know, those shy tendencies. That is true. And since they were showing their Street Fighter love, you know, the two of them, maybe, maybe that helped them in this little Q&A. Maybe it is. Maybe it is one of those things that literally just donning a costume allows you to be more free. You know, maybe it, maybe it is one of those things that you may be shy in street clothes, but you get that costume on and you are a different person. So very true. Who knows? But they were a blast to talk to. And we really look forward to seeing more and more of their their stuff. Oh, yeah. Seeing more of their stuff. But then also, you know, I just want to say thank you so much for yes. taking the time out of your guys's convention schedules to drop into a room and let us all ask you some questions and everything. And it was really nice. It was nice to get to know you guys a little better. All right, nerdlings, please drop a like on the video and leave some comments down below letting us know if you are familiar with either cosplayer and any of their works from the past, especially if you happen to have a favorite. We would love to know what is your favorite. And be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell because you want to come back. There are more VisionCon videos to come. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so that you can be notified that there is more VisionCon coming your way. And... Don't forget to go over to Tee Public. We've got merchandise over there, and we want to see you in that merch. And remember, nerdlings, if we like it, we nerd it. Don't know what the hand was about. You like the hand, just like I like doing this. <laughs>